This diagram is going to show you how an ionic bond is formed during a chemical reaction between atoms of beryllium and atoms of fluorine. And I want you to take note of this. Notice that the beryllium atoms and the fluorine atoms are on opposite sides of the periodic table. If I take a beryllium atom, any beryllium atom, and draw its, its diagram, you see it has a nucleus, it has energy levels, and in those energy levels are electrons. You can see those electrons. There's four of them. Two of them, the outer electrons, are valence electrons. Our fluorine atom, on the right side of the periodic table, you notice has nine electrons each, but only seven of those are valence electrons. The outer electrons are valence electrons. Seven valence electrons. That's what places it in group 17 of the periodic table. Now this is important because when beryllium atoms and fluorine atoms form ions, this is what happens. Beryllium atoms form ions with a positive 2 charge. However, fluorine atoms form ions with a negative 1 charge. Why is that important? You'll see why. Now remember, these are still beryllium and fluorine atoms. The beryllium atom in its nucleus has four protons. Each fluorine atom in its nucleus has nine protons. Well, they certainly have neutrons also, but we really don't care at this point about the neutrons. What we care about are the particles that have electric charges the electrically charged, the negatively charged electrons, and the positively charged protons. When a beryllium atom gets near a fluorine atom, the fluorine atom needs one valence electron to make a stable octet, 8. And what's it going to do? It's going to steal that from a beryllium atom, just like that. And that fluorine atom gains a negative charge because it gained one extra electron. That next electron goes over to another fluorine atom. And that fluorine atom will also have then a negative charge. It leaves our beryllium, since our beryllium lost two valence electrons, it leaves it with only two negatively charged electrons and four positively charged protons in its nucleus. And that means our beryllium atom now has a plus two charge. So look at this. It should be obvious oppositely charged particles will do what? They will attract each other. And so the negatively charged fluorine atoms will attract a positively charged beryllium atom. And since the charges are exactly equal, when they're attracted, they will cancel out the charges. And they will form this formula unit of BEF2. That's the formula for beryllium fluoride. Every formula unit of beryllium fluoride contains two fluorine atoms and one beryllium atom and the electric charge is exactly cancelled out. The single electric charge on each fluorine atom cancelled out the two positive charges of the beryllium atom. Cancelled them out and now that they're cancelled out we now have a electrically neutral formula unit of beryllium fluoride, BEF2. That's one beryllium, two fluorines bonded together. And the name of our compound is beryllium fluoride. So here is the toughest question in this lesson. How do I know if I add beryllium to fluorine? How do I know what the product is going to be. How do I know that the product is actually going to be beryllium fluoride, BEF2? Here's how I figure that out. I write down the reactants using the symbols for the atoms, BE plus F. And then I include the oxidation numbers. If I look on the periodic table, beryllium is in group 2. It therefore has an oxidation number of plus 2. Fluorine is in group 17, and it therefore has an oxidation number of negative 1. Now watch what I do with the oxidation numbers. The positive 2 and the negative 1, I'm going to drop the signs 
I'm going to drop the positive and I'm going to drop the negative and then I'm going to cross those over and those numbers are going to be the subscripts of the beryllium and the fluorine symbols so the one comes over here as the subscript for the beryllium and the two comes over here as the subscript for the fluorine so I can get rid of the oxidation numbers I now have BE1 F2 and that tells me the ratio between beryllium and fluorine that will produce an electrically neutral product BE F2 just like that remember if the subscript is 1 then you don't have to show it that 1 is understood so instead of writing BE1 F2 I just have to write BE F2 and the 1 the subscript of 1 is understood other things to remember important things BEF2 is referred to as a binary compound that prefix BI by means 2 it's a binary compound because it's made of two ionically bonded elements a metal and a nonmetal metals are on the left hand side of the periodic table nonmetals are on the right BEF2 is a formula unit not a molecule why because it's ionically bonded BEF2 is a salt why because it's made of two ionically bonded elements a metal and a nonmetal from the left side of the periodic table and the right side the nonmetals are on the right metals are on the left and whenever a metal and a nonmetal bond it's referred to as a salt so three terms you want to remember binary compound formula unit and also a salt well how about a little practice the first problem says mg plus o produces what here's how we figure it out first we find magnesium on the periodic table magnesium you see is in group 2 the most common oxidation number for elements in group 2 is positive 2 so that 2 becomes the superscript of the mg next elements oxygen oxygens in group 16 it has a negative 2 oxidation number we'll bring that negative 2 up to the oxygen now we're gonna drop the signs we're gonna bring the 2 down from the magnesium we'll bring the 2 down as a subscript for the magnesium and our answer is MgO note that that's a one-to-one -one ratio next problem potassium plus chlorine produces what well we'll locate potassium on the periodic table there it is group one the oxidation number plus one we'll bring that up that becomes a superscript for the potassium next element is chlorine again group 16 oxidation number is negative one and that's going to become the superscript for the chlorine now we're going to drop the signs we'll bring the one down to the chlorine and that's going to be the subscript for the chlorine and we'll bring the one down for the potassium that one will be the subscript for the potassium it's a one to one ratio and the product is KCl again that's a salt a metal plus a nonmetal it's ionically bonded it is a binary compound because it contains two elements next we have strontium and phosphorus well we locate strontium on the periodic table atomic number 38 it's in group 2 oxidation is plus 2 we're gonna bring that positive 2 up that becomes the superscript on the strontium next element phosphorus oxidation number is negative 3 so we're gonna carry that negative 3 over here that's going to be the, become the superscript of the potassium well next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the signs again we're going to bring the numbers only down as the subscripts for the strontium is going to be three for the phosphorus it's going to be two that gives us sr3 p2 there it is that's the product next problem scandium and chlorine well, if you look at scandium we notice that scandium is a transition metal 
and it can have various oxidation numbers. In this case, we're working with scandium-2. The oxidation number is plus 2. So that 2 is going to come up, and it's going to be the superscript on the scandium. The chlorine in group 17 has an oxidation number of negative 1, and we'll bring that negative 1 over. That becomes the superscript on the chlorine. Drop the signs. Bring both those numbers down as subscripts. So we have scandium 1, chlorine 2. So it's SCCl2, just like that. Next problem, calcium and phosphorus. Calcium on the periodic table. Group 2. Oxidation number is 2. We'll bring that positive 2 up. Phosphorus, over here in group 15, it has an oxidation number of negative 3. And we'll bring the negative 3 over. That becomes the superscript for the phosphorus. And again, we're going to drop the signs. We're going to bring the numbers down, the digits down. They're going to cross over. We're going to bring the 3 down to the subscript of the calcium. We'll bring the 2 down to the subscript of the phosphorus. And so we have Ca3P2, and that is our product. Well, I hope you learned something from this lesson. Leave a comment. Any suggestions are always appreciated. And compliments are really appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching.